and I welcome you back to the Debrinning Channel. And today we are talking about the Hoover Dam tour that I took earlier today. And interesting piece of information come out. I get tidbits anywhere I can. And check out what this tour director happened to say while we were there. Take a listen. The bureau's going to do anything it can to not let this thing reach Deadpool. Deadpool is when the water drops below the intake towers and it can no longer produce power. So it's 150 feet away from that. So it's still a long ways away. Um, but we're going to do anything we can to not let that happen. So. so you heard it there right from the Bureau of Reclamation that they will not allow it to go to Deadpool ever, ever, ever. According to this guy, probably what his bosses are telling them and probably what their bosses are telling them, you know, how it works. So that's how it goes. So we started off going down this long elevator and then we ended up at the diversion tunnel. So check this out. We are standing inside of the inner diversion tunnel. Right here is a diagram map of the construction site. Nevada's right here. Arizona is on this side. Now on the Nevada side where we are currently, we made our way from the elevators through this narrow access tunnel called the construction added tunnel and walked, made our way into this room right here. This is the inner tunnel. Before they started construction, they would need to create and blast four diversion tunnels, two on each side of the canyon walls, and each of them blasted through 56 feet in diameter, approximately 4,000 feet long. And it took almost two years to complete, just 19, 18, 19 months of blasting, and lined them all up with three feet of concrete all the way around to make them 50 feet in diameter. Blasting took place on each uh, side of the Diversion tunnels, they were blasting from both directions. And drilling great jungles were one of the most efficient ways to create them. An engineer came up with a better solution than setting up ladders and taking them down every time. So they blasted, they had no computers or calculators, all they had were pencil and paper and slide wheels. But the access tunnel serves a purpose for when they meet together right here in the center, they knew when to stop blasting. Now, from that, all the loose rock materials that were taken out of these diversion tunnels were later used to create temporary copper dams. They built a bridge across, trucks would come in and unload and dump every 15 seconds loose debris and rock into the Colorado River to create the upper copper dam. The purpose of the copper dam is to force the river to flow into the tunnels on each side. Around the construction site, the lower coffin dam was built to prevent water from backfilling into the site. So you got all this drafty space in between these two dams, and so they now need to excavate 135 feet of silt to reach the solid foundation. Once you get to bedrock, you can begin the construction. And the first pour, the first bucket of concrete, was poured on June 6, 1933. Every 78 seconds, they deliver a bucket containing 8 cubic yards or 16 tons. At 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 3 8 hour shifts, the entire construction completed in just one week shy of two years, May 29, 1935. The workers only had two days off a year. Anyone get, want to guess what those days were? Christmas? July 4th, Independence Day, yes. Those are the two days off they're allowed a year. It was optional. You can come into work that day if you wanted to. However, on your work scheduled day, any other day, if you didn't show up, you called out sick, for any reason, if you didn't show up to work, you were fired. But you could reapply again. They would do this multiple times using a different name. Yes. No social security, that's how they got away with it. After the completion of the dam, the next step, of course, we got to create the reservoir of Lake Mead. To do that part, we got to shut down the tunnel. So they use a three million pound steel gate, closing off the entrance. They also added 125 foot of concrete tunnel plugs. They would shut down three, leave one open to deliver water downstream to California. 
about a year and a half until the water reached the four inlets. They closed off the last diversion tunnel, destroyed the lower cofferdam. They left the upper cofferdam alone. No time to waste. They just uh, they didn't want to spend any resources on that, so they just let the water fill over the top of it. Now, the reservoir of Lake Mead enters through these four inlets through large pipes we call pen stops, 30 foot diameter boiler steel plate pipes. We are standing on top of these pipes, taking a look out the window over here, get a good view. Uh, water can travel through them up to 96,000 gallons a second. And then transfers to small pipes that lead down to the commercial generator's turbine. It hits that turbine at around 50 miles an hour, then makes its exit to the river system. Lastly, folks, taking a look at this uh, spillways right here on the map. We have two of them. Each of uh, these spillways are built for flood control. Emergency purposes only, only used twice in history. First time in 1941 to test it. And again in 1983, it was not a test. That time they actually had to use the spillways. Snowpack in the Rockies, very great that year, but it melted way too rapidly. Major storm, perfect storm, El, El Nino year, uh, caused temperatures to warm up a bit too quickly, and the snow melted right away, causing that to travel through all the reservoirs and dams in the river system. When it reached Lake Mead, Lake Mead was already at max capacity. It went up another four feet above its max capacity. So it went over the spillways on each side around the dam for 63 consecutive days on stop. And that, folks, will conclude this first portion of the tour. Next stop is the generator room. We'll be talking about power generation there. Let me be the first person out. Follow me back to the elevators. Thank you. So as we go into the power plant, you can see that there's only two turbines running. If they're lit up, that means they're running. If they're not lit up, that means they're not running. Now, I couldn't tell you how many were running on the Arizona side, but there's only two running on this side, and that is just proof right there. You have those two running. The guide was talking, but you couldn't really hear him because it was so loud in there. So you get a watered-down version. He was much better at presenting it than I am. However, the one down below it's being taken apart because there was a crack in the steel plate and they had to redo it so they haven't determined yet whether that is going to be completely replaced altogether or if they're going to fix the one that's already there so this is the first time that anything's ever happened to a turbine that's had problems i guess they do get inspected quite often they look for there's actually a crack in it and they want to fix it and make it right so that's good news uh, take off all the electromagnets and get it down to just the core and right now they're trying to decide if they can fix it or if they have to replace it. So it's been sitting there for a couple months now. Um, a huge project. That's not something you see all the time. So uh, it's kind of cool that you guys can see that. Then the guide goes on to talk about conserving water in Nevada, how great they are, and take a listen to this. More states need to step up. Nevada has probably, or not probably, the best water reclamation program in the country. All the water that goes into our drains goes back into the lake. So everything, the only water we lose is irrigation. So that's why you don't see much grass out here. All that's been you know, basically replaced. They'll, they'll pay you to take your lawns out and put in drought tolerant plants, dripper systems where the water just dripped right onto a couple that, you know, drought tolerant plants to save water. So um, if you've got grass from the old house, they'll pay you. But if they build something new, they're probably not going to put in grass in there. Very little grass because grass takes a lot of water. Your traditional sprinklers, you know, most people from other parts of the country don't think about this, but if your sprinkler spray on the street, it evaporates within seconds. And that's just a complete waste of water. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are being done, but, you know, how, how much is going to help? We just need that snow from the Rocky Mountains to really, really get the lake to start going up. I was shocked to learn that there was no rebar in the dam and it was just sitting there on bedrock. It's just crazy that that's the way it is. No rebar in the dam. That's right. The dam is relying on its shape and its size to hold it in place. So I asked the guide what he thought about when California would have more water restriction and this was his response. I would think pretty soon. I mean, I know that there's a lot of talks on what stuff that they're going to try to do to, you know, save some of this water, but um, California definitely needs, I heard that they are going to start having a similar program to what Nevada does with the water, the water reclamation. Um, whether that happens this year or in 10 years, I don't know. 
Um, but there's just a lot of talks of what they're gonna, you know, try to do. But you know, the desalination is a big thing. You know, taking water from the ocean, which you know, kind of makes sense. But you know, yeah, the, the biggest body of water right in our backyard. Exactly. I mean, there, obviously, there's politics, there's environmentalists, there's so many things that are in the way of that. Mm -hmm. That you know, there are some of them off of San Diego. They already have them, mm -hmm. um, but I, it just costs, from what I hear, so much money that for it to happen. I mean. It, definitely an act of Congress, but I don't know right. when, because I mean, if anything, use that water for like the farmers. There's a lot of agriculture, you know, in, in uh, California. So, you know, they need to keep some of that water and just use that and then let this stay in the Southwest. You That's know? what I say. Like, why don't, why did they just let this all go into the ocean? It's just crazy that that happens. Right, right. So, I, we'll see. But, uh, we need, uh, we just need more water. We just need snow. You know, we just needed to start snowing a lot in the Rocky Mountains. For it doesn't help that there's another La Nina coming. Right. The third year in a row. Right. That was everything that we learned on the dam tour, and it was educational and very well worth the money. If you ever get out here, I recommend everybody doing it. 30 bucks to get in, and it's 15 just to do the power plant. You see a little bit more. There's not a whole lot more after that. So thank you guys for stopping by, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you on the next one. I'll be down at Havasu Friday if anybody lives down there. I know I'm going to meet James down there and a few other people as well. So. I'll be at the Red Onion around noon on Friday if anybody wants to come and say hello. Me and James will be there, maybe more, hopefully. So you guys have a blessed day, and we'll see you on the next one.